Hey, everybody, I'm Lizzie Hale from the band Hailstorm, and we're coming to see you with our good friends in Theory of a Dead Man in January, and uh, we'll, we'll, it's going to be a party. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> seen you guys. We haven't seen you guys in so long, and, uh, and uh, it, it's well overdue, well overdue. We're going to bring it. <laughs> Beautiful, and you know all Australians love a party, mate, so that's a very good way to introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, you know, you know, we've been talking about um, we, that if, uh, if, <laughs> if uh, rock show was a verb, you guys rock show very well. You, you, you know how, you know how to properly rock show. I, I feel like everything that comes before you um, is just a warm up for the craziness that I know will ensue. So <laughs> I think you're pretty well spot on there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I know. <laughs> so as you mentioned, Hellstorm will hit Australia with special guest Siri Be Dead Man over late January and early February of 2023. So she's not a not a bad way to start the new year off. No, not at all. I uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh we're 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 the, so excited that <laughs> it's <laughs> instead of us fully preparing for like winter time in Europe, which we're leaving in a week. Um, we've been talking about what we're going to wear in Australia. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, what are we going to do? We're all still in this zone. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a time. There's something that always happens every time that we come over there. Either we wander off and meet a bunch of locals and party till like 6 a.m. <laughs> or, you know, we just end up hanging out like with a, a a motley crew of some of our rock friends on, like on accident it's just like there's something always happens so we're looking forward to saying yes to adventure <laughs> it definitely sound like you've been here before because that sums australia up pretty well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm glad i got the full experience <laughs> <laughs> so what sorts of delights have you got in store for us what do you got planned oh so many delightful things um well obviously we're gonna have to debut some of these new songs off of the new album uh, for the first time in, uh, in, in Oz. So, uh, so we're going to be doing that, but, um, you know, we plug in, we play, it's, it's a rock show. Um, we, we're going to be switching our setup every night. We're going to get, you know, make sure we give everybody everything that they possibly need. Uh, but I also have heard from a bunch of our, our super fans, uh, that they're going to be coming to multiple shows. So we're going to switch it up every night for them and just, you know, keep it, keep it interesting. <laughs> cool. And you mentioned you're bringing theory of the dead man, theory of a dead man with you for the whole run. So why choose them as a touring partner? Well, we've known theory of a dead man. They've been our brothers from another mother. Um, since before we made our first record on Atlantic, um, we, uh, we bonded over our mutual love for thin Lizzie <laughs> okay. and, uh, and haven't looked back since we toured with them a bunch of times. Uh, but it, it's been a while. So we're basically, we're doing it kind of selfishly. We're like, well, who do we need to catch up with? <laughs> we need to catch up with Yuri because we haven't hung out with them in so many years. So, um, so yes, a little selfish on our part, but it's it's going to be a great show. And and uh, those boys um, always put on a great show. And and uh, their latest album is really awesome. So yeah, we're we're lo we're looking forward to it. And also, I mean, you you've uh, you've hung out with Tyler Connolly, right? He's, he's a bit of a jokester. Uh, there's going to be some pranking. Uh, there's definitely going to be some mis <laughs> some mischief <laughs> that we will be getting ourselves into <laughs> purely because he's around. Good stuff. And you mentioned before the album Back from the Dead, which you released back in May this year. So how much of that will you be playing? Will that be a focus for this tour or are we just going to chuck a couple in? Um, it, it'll be, a, there'll be a central nucleus of it. I, I, I think that for, for me, it's important to, to, you know we're not going to play just all, all night uh all new songs because i i i wouldn't want to do that to our audience because i've been i've been in those in those concerts where like the, the <laughs> where where the band is very self-serving and i'm in the audience and just like i just want to hear my favorite song <laughs> um so we're going to be giving everybody like just you know the things that we're known for and everything and then uh but then definitely all of the heavy heavy hitters off of the record and they could vary from night to night um depending on what we want to do uh, because there's just a vast array of them. It's like, it's a barn burner of a record, but then there's also some, some, you know, lighter ballads and all of that. So just, I think it depends on our mood. We, we literally switch the setup every day over here as well. And it's like about an hour before, <laughs> before we go out, we start talking about it and write it down and distribute it to everybody. So yeah, we like keeping even our crew on our toes, on their toes, you know? Good stuff. <laughs> so, 
sometimes sometimes in the middle of the show we'll call an audible we're like we're not doing that one this time we're switching it out with something else so our lighting guy's like no <laughs> i haven't done that in like six months so it's, weird <laughs> it's great yeah <laughs> and back from the dead was written during lockdown and addressed many issues like mental health that were a byproduct of the lockdown so was that written more from a personal point of view or from a general perspective um i think it started out with a a personal point of view because uh you know as 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 i've come to realize since this album has uh has been released that um i was not alone in any of my <laughs> my issues or my feelings which is beautiful it's a beautiful thing for that to kind of come back full circle um but i i've always been an advocate for mental health um i i have been working hard with my peers to kind of break the break the stigma about seeing therapy seeking out therapy about seeking out help um be, you know because there still is that weird thing in people's minds like well if i need to go and see a shrink that must mean i'm crazy like no it just it just it's kind of like and and not to to dumb it down into something trivial like a dentist but we do go to a dentist for our teeth we go to uh, a physical doctor make sure our heart is still beating you know and so this is just a doctor for your brain so i i like talking about a lot of that stuff but considering we were all going through this crazy almost we were all going through an identity crisis we were all going through depression we all had anxiety either generalized because of the way the world is and how we just couldn't get away from it or otherwise maybe you're worried about the future but you know whichever and so <clears throat> writing has always been my way of getting through that because i feel like in this weird way if you're able to put the pieces of the puzzle together in your head and put it out on paper okay i think i figured something out like it's a, a little sense of of hope and um so to write about that whilst doing that through that outlet um it's just a, it's just a beautiful way to kind of do something about the way the world is you know it's like i'm not you know i'm not a politician i'm not a fighter i'm not you know all i can do is is try to put out uh you know some words and some music out in the world and hopefully you know make somebody else's day or make somebody feel less alone so that was that was more or less the mission statement i suppose <laughs> so and started recording that album during the social distancing period so how much of an impact did that have on what you did oh my gosh it, it, it wouldn't be the same record if it had all remained normal because it was kind of like it was kind of like a relay race like I'd come up with an idea or like Joe would have a riff or somebody would have some idea. And, and, and so somebody would start something and then we just keep passing the time down. Like I'd have like, like, like the, the skeletal ideas of a song. There's like, Hey guys, what do you think? Send it to my guitar player. He would write something on top of that, send it to the rhythm section, but it was just so messy. And then, um, when we finally got into the studio, it was like, Oh, everything's fine. We could just like mask up and whatever. And then everything locked down again. We had to get out of the studio. So it was a lot of like back and forth. Um, you know, I did a lot of my vocals remote. Uh, and uh, the, the weird thing that happened is that my, the vocals from this album, from the, really the entire album are the demo vocals. So uh, I, I wrote, all, I, uh, I, I, uh, I sang to all of our demos and just like made them into keeper takes. And then when we finally got into the studio, our producer's like, well, this is where the energy is, you know, this is where the energy is. And I don't know if you can really duplicate that now. It's like, there's something about the magic of when it all was actually happening when all the songs were new. So when we got in, we basically, we build up all of the tracks around my vocal takes, which was something that we never do. Like, I'm never the first one to get things done. I, you know, it's always like, okay, we got to do like, drums first then we gotta add the guitar then we gotta add the bass and then now lizzie you go sing you know and so the fact that we did it the complete reverse it was like almost like building the pyramid upside down but uh but the guys loved it because the guys are like oh you have this melody here that inspired the bass line you have this here that inspired. so it was almost like my vocals were a roadmap for this album <laughs> which is kind of scary i'm like why are people following me but um i'm the I'm the lead singer. I don't know where I am. I don't know what country I'm in, you know. So um, it's very true, by the way. But um, as much as we try to combat it, that lead singer disorder just seeps in. It's inevitable. But, uh, but yeah, so, but we had a great time doing it. And we inadvertently 
uh, wrote this heavy record and we didn't realize how heavy of a record we made until we were coming up with the sequence of all the songs and my guitar player and I, Joe, and I were looking at each other like, I think, are we encroaching on metal right now? We're like brushing up against it. I, I think we made a heavy record, but we came by it honestly because I mean, that was our only outlet. We could lay it all out on the stage somewhere. So it's gotta be on, on the record, but yeah. It's a little angsty, that's why. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so can we go back a bit in time here, mate? Like, you've been writing music sure. with your brother, RJ, since around 1997, when you were 13 and 10, respectively. So how did those early years of writing together shape what was to later become Hailstorm? <laughs> and those, those early years of writing with Hailstorm, we thought we rocked way harder than we actually did. <laughs> um, like, we were rocking out, and it was like, it, it was not heavy in the beginning whatsoever. In our minds, it was but we haven't quite figured out how to translate that. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the process has been kind of similar. It's, it hasn't changed too much. Um, whereas like, uh, you know, I'll usually have, have an idea or two. And at the time before we had Joe and Josh in the band, it was just my little brother and I doing it. So um, I would write these songs. He would write a drum part over it. We would go back and forth about it. And then, you know, we'd, we'd add things in, but um it's pretty much it's pretty much the same dynamic, and and especially with our personalities. I mean, we're both in our thirties now, <laughs> and so we can say, at least in age, we're adults, right? We're we're adults okay. now. We're adult oh. siblings. But every single day, man, I can't I can't even begin to tell you how many times I gotta switch my my. I'm looking at you with my bandmate eyes, or I'm looking at you with my big sister eyes. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing back there? He's perpetually 15 years old. It's like, it's hilarious. He will never be an adult to me, um, which is beautiful because we still approach everything kind of the same where it's like, well, yeah, this could be a crazy idea, but what else are we going to do? So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and did you ever let yourself dream back then that you'd one day be in a popular band or where you are? <laughs> yeah, um, we definitely dreamed of it. Um, there's a big difference between believing that you're capable of great things and then it actually happening. So we're very lucky to even be in this position. It still blows my mind. But um, specifically, I remember being in the grocery store with my, with my mother and little bro and I had just started the band and RJ's like, hey, we got to start working on our autographs. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah? He's like, well, you never know. Somebody might know we're in a band and want an autograph. I'm like, Slow down, buddy. <laughs> we're, we're literally just, we're, we're going into the grocery store for eggs and, and bread and uh, nobody knows who we are. <laughs> but, the, but the funniest thing is that now it's like we have been recognized in multiple grocery stores and my, bro <laughs> and, and my brother and I bring that up every single time. Like, see, it happened. Oh, yeah. Full circle. <laughs> yeah. So along those lines, how, how different is the reality to the childhood dream? Oh God, um, very different um, in, in, in both good ways and bad. Uh, I mean, the most, it's, it's better than I could have ever imagined it being. Um, just fulfillment wise, uh, the relationship that we have with our fans, uh, the fact that we have a mission statement and things that we stand for, the fact that we haven't killed each other yet, you yeah. know, like, like, all, all, the all the accomplishments. And, you know, and then, yeah, okay, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a lot harder than I thought it was going to be when I was 13, but nobody ever said it was going to be easy. So I've never been like, oh, well, this is crazy, but you learn to adapt, you know, you, you choose your heart, you know, nothing, nothing great ever comes easy either. So, you know, it's, it's all about, well, you choose your heart, you know, it's hard not following your dream too. And living with that so you might as well go with the latter <laughs> very true and as you mentioned in 2004 when joe and josh both finally joined the band that's when hailstorm came to life so how did the band and your music back then reflect the world around you oh wow especially when we met joe and josh it like just really felt like this was it this was the family this was these were the guys um we all got together in my in my parents basement to jam for the first time. And we ended up doing like a seven minute version of uh, the Beatles, uh, She's So Heavy, I Want You. And uh, <laughs> I remember my brother completely like destroying his kid. He got emotional about it. It was good, um, all good feelings. Um, but th that, I mean, 
that is our sound. We all come from four different quarters of rock, you know, whereas like I was obsessed with 70s and 80s, you know, uh, hard rock and metal, you know, I still am. Uh, but that was my main influence. And then my my brother is more into, he was into uh, the Beatles and Vanilla Fudge and uh, just a lot of that kind of like just more, more of the 60s kind of stonery hard rock and uh you know the who and all of that and then um and then josh grew up again still on, with his dad's music but on a lot of chicago and he's like classically trained and he can play jazz and then joe is like total like just grunge nerd like he he like he discovered nirvana that was it you know like it, it's 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 happening he's playing guitar he's, he's our grunge kid and that is what shapes the hailstorm sound and then with those earlier songs, we were just being sponges because we had just kind of, we first, we were first starting to tour nationally and we were touring out with all these bands. So I became a serial eavesdropper. Like we'd be at a, we, and I still do this to this day. And I feel so embarrassed because I'll get really deep into somebody else's story sit next to me. Like, like there'll be conversations that I hear that I'm like, you probably shouldn't be having that conversation in public, but I'm listening anyway, you know, but you get a lot of stuff like that. You get a lot of stories that way. Um, a lot of communication between us and like just people and, and our fans, you absorb uh, people's stories. You're also trying to figure out how do you view the world around you too? So it's like all of our songs, especially from a lyrical aspect are, they have that core truth of, it's something having to do with me or something that I feel passionate about because I, I'm a terrible liar. So, <laughs> so it's got, there's got to be some, some, uh, some inkling of, uh, of something personal in it. Very cool. Uh, Lizzie, well, thanks for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. But before we go, do you You're have any messages for your Australian fans? Uh, yes. Uh, so um, the last time that we partied and I believe it was either, I think, I think it was in Melbourne. Um, we ended up going bar hopping on a day off. Just, uh, it was just myself, Joe and Josh. RJ was out. I don't know. RJ was vibrating somewhere. He had his own party and his mind going on. And we ended up meeting these two girls at, I believe it was at the Cherry Bar. No, it was somewhere else. And I've, we met these two girls and they're like, oh, let's take you around places. And then they knew who we were, but then they started introducing people to us. And then they knew... And we ended up being like the Pied Piper. Like we just started collecting people as we went on. And then the weirdest thing happened. We're like, okay, we're going to go back to the hotel. And everyone's like, okay. And everybody followed us back to the hotel. And we're like, well, we meant like, we're going to go to bed. It's like four in the morning. And they're like, oh, but you know, there's like a lobby bar. And I was like, all right, fine. We'll go to bed at <laughs> six in the morning. But you guys are trouble over there. Um, I digress, but but I'm just really excited to be able to see all of you and to experience the the immense energy of what Aussie rock is all about. And I've missed it so much. So yeah, we're we're gonna be bringing it for you. And it, like like I said before, it's gonna be a party. <laughs> party be, and like I said before, we all love to party too, so Lizzie. So we can't wait to see you here in January, mate. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for taking the time for me. You're absolutely delightful as always. And, uh, and if you have any trouble coming to the show or, or doing anything, you know how to find us. So we'll help in any way we can. Beautiful. Thank you. I'll definitely be at the Brisbane show anyway, at the very least. Yes. Brizzy. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Merry Christmas. It's crazy, Brizzy. Now and then, and we'll see you in Brisbane. Yes. We'll see you there, darling. <laughs>